So alternate fingerings, if you don't know what they are, then stick around because in today's lesson, I'm gonna be showing you three different ways that you can play B flat on the saxophone. Plus I'm gonna share about another six alternate fingerings that really every saxophone player should know. So lots to talk about today, it's gonna to be a great lesson. First though, why on earth are we talking about alternate fingerings anyway? Well, here's the thing. Alternate fingerings are really just your secret code to help your fingers move as fast as possible. So if you wanna get really fast fingers and wanna be efficient and want to be able to play beautiful, smooth, fast lines, then you really need to understand how to play these alternate fingerings and also more importantly, when to use them so that you can be as efficient as possible. Hey, if you've not met before, my name's Nigel McGill and I run a thing called Sax School Online, which is a huge online resource of lessons and courses for adult learners. In fact, we've helped over 10,000 students over the last eight years, and there's everything in there from beginner players right through to advanced players. If you're curious to find out more, there's a 14-day trial, I'll put the link down below. Now, we talk about alternate fingerings a fair bit in sax school because we've got students in there who are just getting started, but we've also got some really advanced players in there who are playing silly, fast things, and that's the point where alternate fingerings are essential. Anyway, enough talk, let's get stuck in learning our first alternate fingerings. <laughs> So the very first fingering we probably all learned on saxophone for B flat was this one with two fingers, one, two, the B finger and the A finger, plus the first side key down here. Now that's a good everyday fingering that you can use in lots of different situations, but it's not the fingering that I use the most. Now I just want to tell you quickly too, of course, B flat is where we go B down a half step or a semitone to get to B flat but also it's the same as an A sharp. So we can go from an A, the note below B, up a half step or a semitone to get to A sharp. And A sharp and B flat are exactly the same note. Okay, so we've got B flat like this. Now another fingering that I use, actually, you know what, as I get older, I use this nearly all the time. That's B with the little key in there. Some people call it the bis fingering. It's the B flat key, that little tiny fella in there. So we use our index finger, our nose picker, we got it on the B, and we just move our finger down a little bit so that we cover both keys. So this is the front B flat. And this is the A fingering with the side key. I like to call that the side B flat. There's the tiniest difference between them, but both, both of those B-flats are brilliant B-flats to use and they sound great. So which one would you use in which circumstance? Well, it really depends on what note's coming before and after that B-flat. So for example, if you were playing a chromatic line where you were working up a scale in half steps or semitones, then the side B-flat would probably make more sense. <laughs> If I tried to do that with the front B flat, it would be more difficult. So I do it a lot, so I'm pretty good at moving between there, but for newer players, it can be quite difficult to move your finger around. So more efficient to use here. The other time is when you're playing a trill, which is where we move quickly from one note to the, to the next note a half step up. So let's say we're doing an A to a B flat trill or A sharp trill. So doing that with uh, this would be difficult because we haven't got as much independence with that middle finger as we do even with a band-aid on, you have even less independence on it. So it's much quicker to use the side key, okay? So that's a great example of where you might use it. However, if you were playing a piece of music and the whole piece of music was in the key of F, let's say, where we've got a B flat all the way through, then it can work out just to move your finger over onto the B flat key and leave it there the whole piece. <laughs> So in that situation, I'm always playing B flat, so I can just leave my finger parked over onto that B flat key. Okay, so those are the two most common B flat fingerings, but here's another B flat fingering that might be helpful for you. 
Okay, in certain circumstances, you can also play B flat by putting the first finger down here and then using the first finger or the second finger or really the third finger, although yeah, I'll be honest with you, I've never ever used that. So normally it's the first or the second finger down here. So it's a one and a one. We call that a long B flat. So let's have a listen. This is our normal B flat on the side, on the front, and then long. Or. So when on earth are we gonna use that one, Nigel? Well, again, it depends on what the note is before or after your B flat. So let's say, for example, you were playing something that moved quickly from F to B flat, then that would be a perfect example, right? As opposed to almost impossible. I might prefer to use this one because I can park my finger over. But if you're doing that movement F to B flat or F sharp to B flat, same thing, right? I can leave my finger down as I move to the B flat. Okay, so here's a top tip for you. Now that you know these four B-flat fingerings, when you're learning a new piece of music, go through your music, and when you get to a B-flat, put a little mark on it with your pencil of which B-flat fingering that you're gonna use. For example, are you gonna use the front B-flat? Are you gonna use the side B-flat? You could write front, or you could write side. Or are you gonna use the long B-flat fingering? Okay, you could call it long one or long two. And the reason that we do this is because as we're learning a new piece of music, particularly if it's a complicated phrase and we're struggling with flappy fingers, if we write in which fingering we're gonna use for B flat and then we're consistent with it as we learn it, that's the fastest route to really getting your fingers fine tuned and that's the way we get super fast fingers. <laughs> Right, before I get on to talk about some other alternate fingerings, let me know, which B-flat fingering do you use? Do you use the front, the front B-flat or do you use the side B-flat? Which is your favorite one that you use all the time? Let me know in a comment. Okay, let's crack on and talk about some other alternate fingerings that will really help you out with your saxophone. So right out the gate, the very first alternate fingering that I think everyone needs to know about is side C. Yeah, that's right. So you can play C like this, right, with your middle finger. <laughs> But you can also play C by putting the B finger down and then using the middle side key here. So we use our right nose picker, our right index finger, and we stick it on that middle side key. Not the top one, not the bottom one, the middle one. So we use just the side of our finger like that. And when our thumb's locked in there, we literally just push it in like that. Very small movement, okay? <laughs> So here's normal C, side C. Very similar. But that's a super useful fingering, particularly if you're doing a trill. So rather than going B to C with the flappy fingers like this, which is almost impossible to do neatly, you can do it with the side key. But you'll also use it in a jazz setting. In fact, I reckon guys like Ben Webster, Lester Young, they use that side C quite a lot because it really sounds lovely and warm. Right, the next thing we need to talk about is F sharp. So we know about the normal F sharp, we use our middle finger down here. We can also play F sharp like this. First finger F, plus you add this little key down here with your right hand ring finger, okay, your ring finger. So F plus that one. I'll get my other fingers out of the way so you can see. F, F sharp. Now obviously you wanna have your fingers up when you're playing properly, so F and F sharp. Have a listen. <laughs> Again, this F sharp is great if you're doing a trill. 
but it's also really useful if you're playing a chromatic scale. As opposed to, which is almost impossible. All right, you with me so far? So we've talked about B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat. We've also talked about side C, and we've talked about our side F sharp, our alternate F sharp. What's the next one, Nigel? Well, I'm glad you asked. The next one I want to talk about is G sharp. Now, G sharp we know is one, two, three, and our side key over here. But the cool thing about the G sharp and the way the table keys over here work on the saxophone is that we can get a G sharp with any of those other table keys, right? Now that's really important to know because if you're moving from a note that uses those table keys to a G sharp, it can make the movement much smoother to leave your finger on that table key. I'll give you an example. Let's say we're doing a, here's one, let's say we're doing a C sharp major arpeggio. So that's F down here, C sharp to F or E sharp to G sharp. So we can leave our little finger in that same place, not on the G sharp key, but on the C sharp key, right? As opposed to going We're having to take our finger off and do a little dance like that. We can just leave it on there. So it works with any of those notes. Try it out. Right, I've got one more alternate fingering to show you, and then I've got a couple of really cool effect alternate fingerings, which will become really useful for you, I think, particularly if you're playing any rock or blues or ska, jazz, that kind of thing. Okay, high F sharp. Now, if you've got an, a newer saxophone or a pro level saxophone, you've probably got one of these keys, and this is our high F sharp key. So if you've got a, a vintage saxophone or some student saxophones, you might not have one of these on there, but that doesn't matter because I'm gonna show you two different ways you can play high F sharp, okay? So if you do have this key, we can use this with our high F fingering where we use all the palm keys, so all three palm keys, the octave key, the, to the side top side key here, that's high F. And then we add this key to get F sharp. Now, that F sharp also works with our front fingering, and this is important if you don't have this key, okay? So our front high F sharp is a C key, the octave key, the top spatula key with our index nose picker finger on our left hand, plus that F sharp key. Now, if you don't have this key, you can use that front F fingering, but instead of using the F sharp key, you use the bottom side key over here. Watch this. So that's a great alternate uh, fingering. If you've got an older saxophone or a student saxophone and you haven't got that F sharp key, then use that front F and the side. A lot of jazz players prefer to use that anyway because it's got a pretty cool sound to it. Right, so here's the last two fingerings, and these are effect type fingerings. So they are alternate fingerings, but they're also things that you'll use specifically if you're playing in a jazz, funk, blues, ska, um, pop, all those sort of energetic styles. They'll really come in handy. Let's check them out. Okay, so the first alternate is an alternate for middle D. So this is where we're talking about six fingers and our octave key, right? That's D. So you could also play that, a little bit cheeky, but you can play it with the palm key and no octave key. So when might you use this? Well, there's a couple of uh, times that I can think of off the top of my head. The first is if you've really got to quickly move between C sharp and D. You can do it like this. But if you use the side instead, it's much smoother. 
Now, a lot of people will prefer to use that because it sounds a bit flatter, it's got a bit of a darker sound. So you'll find guys like Ben Webster, Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, they'll use that as an effect in their playing. <laughs> And the very last finger I want to show you, this is a really cool one. And this is something that pops up a lot in jazz, pop, funk. And that's where we can use the lower notes, C, B, and B flat, but with an octave key to get it the octave up. I'll show you what I mean. So let's say from C, to then swap to using the low C fingering, but with our octave key. Now you can do that on C or B or B flat. So you've got a whole bunch of fingerings that you can use there when you're practicing. And don't forget that when you're learning a new piece of music, always make a note on your music which fingering you're going to use, and that's going to help you to be consistent when you're practicing. Now, I've got a fingering chart that you can download for free from my blog. I'll put a link to that down below. And that's got a lot of these fingerings on, but not all of them. But that's a great reference point to have on your music stand. So go grab that fingering chart if you haven't grabbed it already from my blog. And the other thing I'd say to you is if you're really keen to progress further with your playing, then go check out what we're doing at Sax School because there's just so many resources in there that can help you in whatever style that you're keen to play. Uh, and as well as, obviously there's a 14 day trial where you can get started and check it out and see if it's right for you. We've got our tutors in there that'll help you for free as well when you're a member. But also there's a whole bunch of stuff on my channel here that will help you and also on my blog. So there's just tons and tons of resources to help you become a better saxophone player. So go check them out. And uh, most importantly though, keep having fun with your saxophone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to click subscribe and share it with someone else who you think it might help. And keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time.